Coraline's parents never seemed to remember anything about the time in the snow globe. At least they never said anything about it. Coraline never mentioned it to them. Sometimes she wondered if they had noticed they had two lost states in the real world, and eventually conclusion from not. Then again, there are some people who keep track every day and every day hour. There are people who don't. A Coraline's parents were solely in the second camp. Coraline had her place marbles beneath her pillow before she went to sleep last uh, her first night of her home in her room for once more. When she went back to bed after she saw her mother and mother's hand, although there was not much time left for sleeping, she rested her bed and her back against the pillow, something snudged up gently as she did. She sat out, lifted the pillow, the fragments of the marbles I saw looked like the remains of eggshells that have find beneath trees in the springtime, like empty brock broken robin's eggs. Or melt her delicate wren's eggs, perhaps. Whatever had inside the glass spheres had gone. Coraline thought of the three children waving goodbye toward in the moonlight. With them before they crossed that silver stream. She gathered up the eggshell thin fragments with care and placed them in a small blue box, which once held to a bracelet that her grandmother had given to her when she was a little girl. The bracelet was long and lost, but the box remained. Miss Beak and Miss Farcible came back from visiting Coraline's niece. Coraline sat down to the flat for tea on Monday. On Wednesday, Coraline would go back to school. A new whole, new whole school year would begin. Miss Farcible interested in reading Coraline's tea leaves. Well, everything is most likely ship's shade and blue fashion is lovely, said Miss Forcible. Sorry, said Coraline. Everything is coming up for roses. Said Mrs. Forcible. Well, everything is coming up. I'm not sure it is. She pointed at a cup of tea leaves sticking to the side of the cup. Miss Speak uh, tried her and reached to the cup. Honestly, Miriam, you want to go over here and see. She blinked over to the thick circles. Oh dear. No idea I have to work. It looks like a hand. When I look at it with a clump of leaves, it does not look like a hand. It looks like reaching for something. I wish the Scotty doll was hiding in Miss Forcible's chair. He wouldn't come out. I think he needs some, some sort of fight, said Miss Spink. He has a deep gash up his side. Poor dear. I'll get him to the bed later this afternoon. I knew we will get done with it. Something cool I knew could be done. The final week of the holidays and the weather was magnificent as the summer itself, trying to make up for the miserable weather they had been living by the giving them, giving them the bright glorious days before it ended. The crazy old man upstairs called out for Coraline when he saw her miss speak in Mrs. Forceful's flat. Hey, hi, you, Coraline, he shouted over the railing. It's Cor Cor it's Coraline, she said. How are the mice? Something has frightened them, said the old man, searching for scratching his mustache. I think there's, you know, there's a weasel in the house or something about it. I heard it in the night, and in my country, I put a trap, what, maybe you put out a little meat or hamburger when it, when the creature comes so fast, and then BAM! It would be caught and never bother us more. The mice were so scared, I didn't pick up little musical instruments. I don't think it wants meat, said Coraline. She put her she put her neck against the black key that hung up. Inside. She made herself and she cast the key around her neck the whole time. She was in a bath, she never took it off anymore. Something scratched in the bathroom in the window before bed. Coraline was almost asleep. She slipped out of bed and pulled open the curtains. A white hand with crimson finger fingernails was throwing the lens in the drain pipe. Amazing out of sight, there was a deep uh, gouge in the glass in each side of the window. Coraline slept uneasily at that, that night. Walking time to the plot of a plan of pounder from falling back to sleep. Never quite certain her pounding ended as the dream began. On one ear, always a sound of something scratching at his bedroom door. In the morning, Coraline said to her mother, I'm going to have a picnic with my dolls. Did I count over a sheet? Hold one very longer as a, ta a tablecloth? I don't think I have those, said her mother. She lifted the kitchen drawer held napkins with a tablecloth, she pretended about it. Hold hold still, will, it, will this do? She was, it was a fold up in this old paper cloth, covered in red flowers. It was lit from 
the some picnic that I've been on several years before. It's perfect, said Coraline. I don't think you play with your dolls anymore, said Mrs. Jones. I don't, admitted Coraline. They're too protective col coloration. So I'll be back home for my lunch, said her mother. Have a good time. Chloe filled the car box with dolls and some surreal plastic dolls, key teacups, and she filled water as she went outside. She went into the road if she was going to go to the shops. Before she reached the supermarket, she caught the fence which was the wasteland from the old drive, then crawled over a hedge. She had to go into the hedge of the two journeys when to not spill the water from the jug. It was a long, rare about looping journey. At the end, the Coraline was satisfied. She did not have been followed. Uh, followed. She came out behind the dilapidated old tennis court. She sat over to the meadow on the long grass, finding the, the planks of each meadow. There was astonishingly heavy, but almost too heavy for a girl to lift, using all of her strength. But she managed. But she didn't have a choice. She pulled the planks out of the way and she uh, by one, grunting and sweating with much effort, revealing a deep, deep, deep brown, brick lined hole in the ground. It smelled of damp of the dark. The bricks were greenish and slippery. Uh, she spread the tablecloth and laid it carefully over the top of the wall. Oh well. She put a plastic doll to cover every foot on the edge of the well and she waited a minute to cover the, from the water of the jug. She put the doll on the grass beside the cup and making it look like the doll's tea party should. Then Noah retraced her steps in the head from the hedge along with the dusty yellow drive. Uh, around the shop went back to her house. She reached up for the key around her neck and dangled it from the string where the key had something like the play of it. Then she knocked over to the glass of the door of Miss Pink and the torso was flat. Miss Pink opened the door. Hello, dear, she said. I don't want to come in, said Coraline. I just wanted to find out how Hamish was doing. Miss Pink sighed. The vet says that Hamish is a brave little soldier, she said. Luckily, the cud didn't seem to be too affected. We cannot imagine what he have done it. The vet says uh, some animal things. I have no idea what Mr. Bobo thinks. He might have a weasel. Mr. Bobo? The man off of the top flat. Mr. Bobo was a fine sir, old circus family, I believe. Romanian or Slovenian or Lithuanian. Those are the countries, bless me. I never remember them anymore. It has occurred to Coraline that the crazy old man upstairs did actually have a name. She realized after there was a name, it was Mr. Bobo. She would have every chance to look down on it. How often have, like, like Mr. Bobo out loud? Oh, said Coraline. She must be, Mr. Bobo, right, well. She got a little louder. I'm going to play with my dolls now from the little tennis court around the back. That's nice, dear, said Mrs. Fink. And she added coverly, make sure you keep an eye on the old well. Mr. Lovers is here in time. He saw a mile or more. Or might hope that the hand will, uh, was not heard at last as she changed the subject. This key, as Carlyne said loudly, oh, this old key of our house. It's part of my game. I'm carrying it around a piece of string. Well, bye-bye now. What an extraordinary child, said Miss Fink to herself and closed the door. Coraline the hole, I the old across the meadow on the old tennis court, dangling and swinging the black key to the center as she walked. Several times she thought of the color of bone and under and growth. It was a time with a piece of her thirty feet away. She tried to whistle, but nothing happened. But she sang out loud instead a father of song that her father made up for her when she was a little baby, which made her laugh. It went Oh my twitchy witchy girl, I think you're all so nice. I'll give you bowls of porridge and I'll give you boards of ice cream. I give you lots of kisses, I give you lots of hugs, I ne but I never give you sandwiches with bugs in With that that she sang through through the woods and her voice hardly trembled through all the doll's tea party was in the, the left it. She was relieved that a windy day for anything and was still in place. Every water filled plastic cup weighed down the paper cloth and was meant to be and brought a sigh of relief. Now the hardest part. Uh, hello, dolls, she said brightly. It's tea time. She walked through the paper cloth and brought the lucky key. She told the dolls to make a good picnic. Uh, we have to make sure we have a good picnic. The thing carefully as she leaned over gently, the tablecloth and was holding on to a string. She held it beneath. 
Holding the cup of water with the edge of the, the key would weigh the cloth down, but a wave of the key would collapse me into the well. The key has sat in the middle of the paper, uh, paper plant panic, uh, panic cloth. The storm I went to the stream and took a step that now it was all it was hurt. And then up to the hand, she turned to her dolls. Who would like a pear and piece of cherry cake? she asked. Jam out, pinky, parents pill? She served each doll up in the way she the cake in the little plate. Pattering happily, she did so. From the corner of her eye, she saw something bow white scamper from the tree trunk a little closer to closer. She forced herself to look at it. Jeremiah, said Coraline, what a bad girl you are. You dropped your cake. Now you have to do all over again a new slice. As she walked through the tea party until the other side of it, she pretended to clean up the spilled cake to get Jeremiah a new piece. Just then, skittering and she had Jerry's rush came in, and the hand, ready from his fingertips, scrambled through the tall grass and up to the tree stump. She stood there for a moment, like a crab, testing the air, and then made another triumph, a nail clacking leap into the corner of the paper tablecloth. Time for shown to poor Coraline with white fingers closed around the black key. And then the weight of them wearing them in the hand, and the plastic dolls up flying in the tablecloth, the key down to the mother, other mother's right hand, trembling down in the darkness of the well. Coraline counted several uh, solely underneath. She got up to forty before she heard a muffled slash come from the long way below. So had he had once told her if you look up from the sky about a little mind shift, even in the brightest daylight, you can see a night sky and the stars. Quine wondered if the hand could see the stars where it was. He hold the heavy planks and towards while covering it carefully as it should. She didn't do anything to fall in. And she didn't do anything to get out. Then she put her dolls and the kids cups back into the cardboard box and she carried them out. Something caught her eye. It was doing this. Right up in time to see the black cat stalking towards her, its tail head high. Crumbling on the top of the question mark if it you was know, the first time. She had seen the cat several days as, as they had returned together. You know, the other mother's place. The cat, the cat walked over her and jumped into the plank that covered the well and slowly walked with his eye towards her. It sprang down the long grass uh, in front of her and rolled into its back. Wiggling was about especially... Coraline snatched and tickled in the soft fur on its belly. The cat purred constantly. When it had enough of it, it rolled over the front and walked back towards the tennis court, like a tiny pit in the moonlight in the midway sun. Coraline went back to the house. Mr. Bobo was waiting from the driveway. He clapped her on the shoulder. The mice told me it was all good, he said. They are the new savior, Coraline. The Caroline. It's Coraline, Mr. Bobo. Said Mr. Qu was it Coraline? Not Coraline. Caroline. Coraline. Mr. Bobo repeated her name to himself oh, with some uh, with some wonderment and respect. Very good, Coraline. The mice tell you that as soon as they're ready to perform in the pub in public, they show you make sure of them. And the first audience, after all, they have a turn tippling and tumbling and toodle toodle, and you know, dance a thousand tricks. Uh, so do you want to say? I would like it very much," said Coraline. When, when they're ready, he nodded to Mrs. Pink at the forceful door. Mrs. Pink let her in. Coraline went into their pool and she put a box of dolls down on the floor. And she put her hand to her pocket and pulled the stone with a hole in it. Here you go," she said. Coraline, I don't need it anymore. I'm very grateful that I have, that I have saved my life and saved other people's death. She cried out with little, little tight hugs. Threw her arms barely snatched around Mrs. Pink and Mrs. Forceful smiled. At the raw garlic she's been cutting, when Coraline picked up the box of dolls and went out. An ordinary child, said Miss Pink. No one could ever hide that someone will re retire from the theater. That night, Coraline lay in bed, all bathed and all, all teeth clean, with her eyes and sound at the ceiling. It was warm enough that, and the hand was gone. She opened her bedroom window, sighed, and had a and had insisted her father would a curtain from the easy clothes. Her new school clothes were laid out carefully on her chair as she woke. In order to that before was a terrible Coraline was apprehensive and nervous, but she realized there's something that the school doesn't need to scare anymore. She felt like she could hear the sweet music in the night air. 
And, and the kind of music would be played on the tiniest silver and t trombones and trumpets on the pistons and the tubas can decline. Their keys can only be pressed on the tiny pink fingers of the white mice. Coraline imagined into her mask in a dream, with the two girls and the boy in the oak tree in the meadow, she smiled. As the, the first stars came out, Coraline allowed herself to be gentle upstairs to the mouse circus. The warm evening air, telling what would be the summer, was almost done. And that was Coraline, which is written by Neil Gaiman and made into a movie in 2005. I hope you like this audiobook. If you have a if you have a request or a creepy pasta request, please leave it on my description b below comments in the comments below, or DM me on my Instagram. And I so I hope you like, subscribe, and share. Bye now.